Hello and welcome to more WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan softball live from Alumni Field. My name is Charlie Brigham. Alongside me, Jared Greenspan. And we're just about set to deliver game one of today's doubleheader between Michigan and Rutgers. It's a beautiful day out there, Jared. Yeah, it is. It is a perfect day for softball. And why not play two? The doubleheader on tap as Alex Storacco on the mound in the opener for Michigan. She has been lights out this season looking to continue her dominance against the Scarlet Knights today. Yeah, absolutely, and with that, we are set to go. The lineup for Michigan, give you the quick defensive lineup. Left to right in the outfield is Lexi Blair in left, Haley Hoganrod in center field, and over in right field is Lexi Voss. Left to right in the infield is Bump, Rodriguez, Jimenez, and Lou Allen. Behind the plate, as always, steady as a rock, Hannah Carson, and in the circle, you know her, you love her, Alex Storacco. And here we go, stepping up to the plate. Now the sophomore Peyton Linkovich, first pitch on the way from Storacco. Blazes by, but rides a little inside, called ball one. Hannah Carson behind the plate juggled that one a little bit. A blazing fastball, as you said, to start the day from Storacco. Storacco going back in for pitch number two. Big swing and a miss from on Cabbage, so it's going to even out 1-1. One, one. Home plate umpire Deanna Hunt has moved back there. She was at first base yesterday. Lynn Cabbage led off yesterday in the 3-0 win for Michigan. Took an 0 for 0 for 3 and a strikeout. The 1-1. One, one. That one looks like it just missed inside. Count's going to go 2-1 zone. Looking tight early. We saw who is now the third base umpire, Brian Smith, behind the plate yesterday. Strike zone is small, but very consistent. Both teams seem to have a real good grasp on it throughout that one. It wasn't really a topic of conversation, as it, like I said, was pretty consistent. The 2-1 from Storacco. Again, missing a little inside. It's going to be a hitter's count. 3-1 for Link Cabbage when she steps back in. Inside and a little up so far for Storacco, who has only allowed 27 walks in 128 innings on the year, but suddenly behind. The 3-1 changeup gets the outside corner. We're going to go 3-2. Great pitch there from Storacco. Good thinking to go with the off-speed pitch. The heat riding a little inside, so throw something off-speed and get a strike, and now get yourself back in the count. Full count pitch from Storacco. This one hit high. Over in foul territory, covering a lot of ground as Natalia Rodriguez and reels it in for out number one. Yeah, for a second it looked like that ball might drop and LeCavage might stay alive in the at-bat, but Rodriguez covered a lot of ground, as you said, sprinting far over to her right, right on the lip of foul territory to make the grab. Not sure if anyone else was going to get there, and so that was Rodriguez's ball all the way. That is going to bring up the graduate student, Gabrielle Calloway. Callaway, a 281 hitter on the season. Situated way in the back of that left-handed batter's box. Watches pitch number one go by for a ball a little low. You love to see the confidence out of Alex Storacco. That 3-1 pitch going with off speed. Not scared. Knows she's going to hit her spot. The 1-0. Again, rise ball goes a little high. It's going to be a hitter's count. 2-0 for Callaway. Storacco has been... Absolutely lights out all season. Just struggling to find the zone a little bit here. Yeah, the command not exactly where she wants it to be. Let's see if she could fight through it. Taking a little bit more time gripping the ball here. 2-0. Change up goes bouncing in the dirt. Escapes away from Hannah Carson. It's going to be 3-0. Probably just going to see Callaway step out on this one. Beautiful. Beautiful day out there, sun shining. The Michigan baseball team takes batting practice across the way. The 3-0 rise ball goes high, and we're going to see our first base runner of this contest. Four straight balls to Callaway, and she's going to scamper on down to first base. And a four-pitch walk is going to spark a little meeting at the mound here between Storaco and Julia Jimenez, who trots in from second base to give her pitcher a bit of a pep talk. Storaco fell behind the first batter, 3-1. and one. Fought back to get her to fly out to shortstop, but then caved in with a four-pitch walk to follow. And now into the heart of the Rutgers lineup, it's Kayla Bach. First pitch on the way to Bach. This one just missing low. Carson seemed like that one behind the plate, but as I said, Deanna Hunt 
not of the same mindset. Callaway over there on first base is definitely an athlete, but not really a base stealing threat. Zero attempts on the season. Second pitch to Bach. Rise ball goes up in the zone. Sirocco still struggling to find the zone, and we're going to have a quick mound visit. Sirocco has just been, as we said, just an absolute ace for this Michigan team this year. 236 strikeouts and just over 128 innings pitch. I mean, those numbers are just unbelievable. Yeah, and she has now thrown 12 pitches, and nine of them have been outside the zone, which is obviously a reason for concern. You have to trust that she'll get whatever it is, whether it's her, mecha her mechanics or whatnot, her arm slot back to where she usually is, her dominant self, 19 and 3.93 ERA, and only 27 walks entering the day, as we said, in 128 innings pitch. But behind in the count, 2-0, and oh, it's six straight out of the strike zone for Storaco. Bach going to be trying to sit on something here with the 2-0 hitters count. The pitch on the way, and there it is. Finds the zone for a called strike right down Broadway. The 236 strikeouts out of Alex Storaco is tied for 11th in the nation, but it should be said that pretty much everyone above her is throwing well more than 10 innings more than she has. 2-1 from Sirocco, check swing, and it's not going to matter, called strike anyway. The off-speed right at the knees, so Sirocco, after that little mound visit, seems to be battling herself back. Yeah, that's exactly what you want, going right after the hitter, not afraid. Two straight strikes, now she's even the count. Let's see if she could put Bach away. Rodriguez and Jimenez playing in double play depth. The 2-2 rides inside, it's going to be another full count. And the Rutgers hitter is doing a good job of laying off those pitches outside the strike zone. That was a high fastball at the letters, but easily one that Bach could have offered at. The 3-2. Hit on the ground towards second base. Menez flips to second. Toast over to first base. The double play, and they get it. Well, that's exactly what the doctor ordered for Storaco on the 3-2 count. And a picture-perfect double play. Great turn by the middle infielders. Jimenez with the flip. And then Rodriguez with a gun to first, knowing that Bach was... Making her way down the line very quickly using her speed. And a bang-bang play at first. Jonathan Hand with the call. He got it right. And Storaco out of the inning unscathed. I mean, that was just perfect positioning, perfect defensive work all the way around. Jimenez and Rodriguez were right where they needed to be. Routine double play. They made it look easy. And that's what you need. When, you're, when your ace is a little off to start the game, her defense lifts her back up. And now it's the offense's turn to see if it could get Michigan going here as we head to the bottom of the first. Yeah, absolutely. And you said bottom of the first. That means Michigan is due up for the first time in this contest. Give you the quick lineup all the way through. It's going to be Lexi Blair leading off, followed by Natalia Rodriguez, Lou Allen in the three hole as usual. Taylor Bump hitting cleanup. Batting fifth is Hannah Carson. Sixth, Julia Jimenez. Seventh, Lexi Voss back in the lineup. Eighth is Lauren Esman. And rounding out the lineup for the Wolverines is Haley Hoganrod. On the mound for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights today, number nine, Jaden Vickers. Vickers has seen limited action compared to some other pitchers this year. Only thrown 47 innings, a 6.61 ERA. Struggled with some command at times. Has tallied 35 total strikeouts, but has walked 31 batters. Certainly an opportunity for Michigan's offense to get going. Stymied a little bit yesterday, just three runs. Of course, that was enough with the way Megan Bobian was going, the complete game two-hit shutout. But let's see if Lexi Blair can get Michigan's offense off on the right foot as we start today's doubleheader in the bottom of the first. Blair led off yesterday with a double in the right center gap. Natalia Rodriguez followed that up with a double of her own in the left center gap to score Blair, so... The two looking to get out to another hot start again. Lexi hitting 417 for a team high. She watches pitch number one go by. Ball one. When you talk about bright spots in this Michigan lineup, I mean, Lexi Blair has to be the one that sticks out. Hitting 417. It seems like even when days where she doesn't play too well, that average just doesn't drop at all. The 1-0. That one catches the outside corner. Called strike one. It's going to even back out at 11. Yeah, and Lexi Blair, I mean, you look up and down the offensive categories, she leads virtually them all. 
Total bases with 85, doubles with 13, hits, runs. Lexi Blair top them all. 1-1, one, one, rise ball goes high and outside. 2-1 will be the count. Ty Rodriguez sitting over there in the on-deck circle. Rodriguez, a switch hitter, is currently just stationed on the right side. The 2-1 to Blair. Again, goes a little bit high. It's going to be a dangerous situation for Jaden Vickers here with a 3-1 hitter's count to a very good hitter in Lexi Blair. And the other thing with Blair is... She isn't afraid to lay off some pitches if she doesn't like them. Uh, she only struck out seven times, walked 12. 3-1, big swing and fouled backwards into the net. It's right on that one, a good cut. Vickers went to the rise ball there. Blair took a big hack at that one, just missed it. Settling back in now. Catcher with Stanley, taking her time, checking her wristband. The full count pitch. This one hit hard up the middle, knocks the glove off of Vickers and throw over to first, and she's safe, legs it out. Lexi Blair absolutely roped that ball. Line drive right back at Jaden Vickers. Hit so hard it knocked the glove off of her hand. Yeah, a scorcher by Blair, who we said she was right on the last one. She was right on that one as well, obviously seeing the ball well against Vickers. And then the ball comes right out to Workman at shortstop. She had time for anyone except Blair with her speed busting it down the line. She was able to beat that one out for an infield hit. And Michigan is primed to get something going here with a man on first and nobody out. Rodriguez up at the plate, shows bunt, but rise ball goes way high, so she pulls it back. Very typical Michigan style of softball here, especially with Lexi Blair on first base. You know Coach Carol Hutchins loved to play small ball. Not afraid to lay down a bunt, especially with a power hitter like Lou Allen up on deck. 1-0 to Rodriguez, rides inside. Yeah, Lou Allen in the three hole and then bump in the four back to back with nine home runs apiece. That's a lethal 3-4 combo in the middle of the order. And then with Blair and Rodriguez, as table setters, it's pretty hard to stop. 2-0, right down Broadway, called strike one. Going back to that Lexi Blair single, I mean, she hit that ball really hard, but you look at her average, 421, a lot of those hits are similar things to that, just using her speed and legging it out, never out of the fight. Vickers on the 2-1, swung on and hit down the line, and it goes just foul few inches fouled, got ahead of that one down the left field line that had first and third ridden all over it if it was fair with Blair's speed on at first. Yeah, Blair got a really good jump on that one. It was already looking to round second base. Lexi Blair, historically a really good base runner for this Michigan team. 2-2 Two -two will be the count as Vickers set to deliver this one. Bounces into the dirt with Stanley doing a nice job sliding over on that right knee to keep Blair from advancing to second base. So the count will be full. You know, Vickers has now gone full to each of the first two hitters. Not exactly atypical. She's walked 31 on the year. Full count to Natalia Rodriguez. That one goes high. Ball four. So runners are going to be on the pond as Lou Allen steps up to the plate. One runner in scoring position, two on total. Lexi Blair over on second after that infield single, and Natalia Rodriguez works a, works a good walk. And a meeting at the mound, so we've seen mound visits, both the top of the first with Storaco and now the bottom of the first with Jaden Vickers. Storaco was able to work out of not really a jam, but she had thrown nine outside the strike zone in 12 pitches, which is uncharacteristic for her, and induced the ending-ending double play. Vickers is obviously not of Storaco's caliber, and nearly a six-run difference between their earned run averages. But let's see if she could work some magic and get out of this one. Certainly a pickle, first and second, nobody out. And Lou Allen and her nine home runs and 38 RBIs at the dish. Especially just with the crazy amounts of speed Michigan has on the base pass right now and the sheer power of the next two Rutgers in Kind of a dangerous situation as Lou Allen watches pitch number one go by, call the strike at the knees. Yeah, Allen just getting a read on that one. Seemed to be 
taking first pitch strike, especially with Vickers proving to be a little erratic so far today. 0-1 on the way towards Lou Allen. She loads and watches pitch number two go by. Ball one. Vickers has been missing high with that rise ball. And the Michigan hitter is doing a nice job of laying off. The wind blowing out towards center field, so obviously helpful for anybody, especially a power hitter like Lou Allen. And barring a triple play, we'll see two power hitters back to back. The change up to Lou hit hard in the hole between second and third, and Lexi Blair legs it out. Lou Allen's going to reach on a fielder's choice. Workman over there at shortstop had to cover a lot of ground between shortstop and third base, deep in the hole, slid on the knee to keep it in the infield and stop a run. Great defensive play there, but couldn't get it in time to third base. So all three runners reach safely, and that's going to bring up Taylor Bump with bases loaded and nobody out. And there's a speed you mentioned making a difference. The only play that Workman had was to go to third. She was deep in the hole, but Blair going from second to third, blazing speed, able to beat it. First pitch to Taylor Bump. She watches it go by, strike one. The infield playing in in run prevention mode, obviously going to try to fire home the outfield. Isn't playing too far in. The wind has died down a little bit. Vickers taking her time, getting her signs from her dugout. Now checks the wristband and goes to the glove. The 0-1. Bump watches that pitch go by. Ball one in the hole or on deck rather is Hannah Carson. Well, Vickers has dug herself a very deep hole. See if she could pull a Houdini act and get out of it. But Michigan looks primed to take an early lead here. 1-1 one, one towards Taylor Bump. Swung on and popped up over the backstop and out of the stadium. Bump has really put together an incredible campaign on the year. Nine home runs, 22 RBIs, batting 313. That's way higher than her previous career highs. She batted just 171 last year. Cooled off a bit, but had a monstrous home run yesterday. 1-2, rise ball goes high. Lexi Blair is going to try to take home. It's going to be a close play at the plate, and she reaches safely. That's the speed of Lexi Blair we've mentioned so many times. The rise ball just glances out of the glove with Stanley behind the plate and didn't roll too far backwards. It was a close play, but Blair... Not afraid. Taylor Bump actually held up her hand, telling Lexi to stay at third, but she was ready. She had a great jump and used her speed. Lexi Blair's speed gets her to first on the infield hit. It gets her to third on Allen's infield hit, and it gets her home on a wild pitch. So Michigan out to an early 1-0 lead with runners on second and third. Big swing from Bump, and she pulls it foul. We're going to do that 2-2 count again. A souvenir for someone over in the parking lot near the batting cages. Yank that one, got in front of it. See if she could iron it out now on two and two. Hit to the outfield would definitely score one. Probably would have to be in a gap to score both. Two, two to bump. This one hit deep towards right field, right down the line. And hitting the ground, and she's going to reach second base. Lou Allen going to hoof it around third. It's going to be a close play over towards third base. A stand-up triple for Taylor Bump. And two RBIs, Michigan out to an early 3-0 lead. Well, we said it would have to be a gapper to score Allen or something down the line. That'll do it. Both runs get in. Early 3-0 lead for Michigan. Off the bat of Taylor Bump. Uh, Fawcett did all she could in right field, diving for it. Never really got that close to the ball. Then she hit the turf, and by the time she got up, Allen was coasting around third and into score. And then Taylor Bump, hustling around the bases, gets all the way to third horse herself. And that puts Michigan in good position to get another run here with Hannah Carson stepping in. Three runs already home in the inning. First pitch to Carson swung on and hit down the line, and they're going to say it's a foul ball. That one was pretty close. I thought that Callaway at first might have fielded that one in fair territory, but perhaps I'm wrong because Rutgers doesn't seem to have a gripe with it. Carson had a single in the first inning of yesterday's game. Scored Natalia Rodriguez from second base. As the 0 1 comes, it rides low and pops out of the glove with Stanley. Looks around for it quick, but Taylor Bump didn't move too much over there on third base. Michigan hitters being real aggressive here, taking advantage of Jaden Vickers. Well, Vickers, four batters deep, still searching for her first out 
of the afternoon. Hannah Carson takes a big cut at the 1-1, but comes up empty. Vickers now will have an advantage, 1-2. Well, that's the first time today that a Michigan hitter has chased that pitch high up in the zone. Up at the letters, and Carson falls victim to it. Now in a hole, see if she could work her way out of it, 1-2. and two. The pitch to Carson hit on the ground towards shortstop, and it pops up off the shoulder of Workman. Taylor Bump's going to reach home. And Hannah Carson over towards first base. That one most likely will go down as an error. Yeah, we'll see how that's ruled. Tough play for Workman. Just a chopper to short. Got a tough hop. Uh, but great piece of hitting by Carson. Down in the count one and two. Knowing that if she puts something in play, odds are she can get the run in. And she did just that. That one is going to go down as a hit. I mean, Carson hit that ball really hard towards shortstop. And Workman tried to make the do or die play to get Taylor Bump at home. But Michigan tallies on another one, 4 nothing right now. Yeah, some tough luck this inning for Vickers. Blair led off with the infield hit. Allen got an infield hit. And now Carson gets uh, a hit that barely trickles onto the outfield grass that ate up Workman at short. The 0-1 to Jimenez goes high and outside. So only one hard hit ball or not necessarily a hard hit ball, but one ball hit to the outfield this inning, and that was bump scorcher down the right field line. Uh, but on the other hand, Vickers isn't really doing herself any favor getting behind in these counts. The 1-1, off speed goes outside with Stanley doing a nice job getting over to it to keep Carson on first base. And a Carson two for two this year on stolen base attempts, but with an arm like with Stanley behind the plate, probably don't want to test it. She caught Lexi Blair stealing yesterday. Big swing right down the line and off the glove of the third base. And Jimenez is going to get to first. Hannah Carson hauling over to third base. And Jimenez heads up base running there. Trots on down to second. The tough luck inning continues for Vickers. Just off the glove of Linkavage at third. Couldn't make the play. Trickled into foul territory. And heads up base running, as you said, by Carson. Motoring around first to third on a ball that, again, barely left the infield. And that might do it for Vickers. And as you said, that will do it for Vickers. We're going to have a pitching substitution. Checking in is going to be number 35, Izzy Baruti. Well, so Vickers' ERA goes up from 661 to 720. She's responsible for the runners at the corners. She leaves without recording and out. A tough luck afternoon for her. Certainly not the way she envisioned this outing unfolding, but this is what Michigan will do to you. They use the speed to manufacture, the big boppers in the middle, and then just a well-rounded lineup that continues to, there's really no easy out. And I think Vickers learned that the hard way. Yeah, we mentioned that yesterday during the broadcast. There's, you know, sometimes you, here talks that people hiding people in the lineup, kind of trying to strategically put them where, you know, their effects had, if they do get out, wouldn't be too harmful. But you look through this Michigan lineup, there's really nobody that you have to quote unquote hide. Everyone can do damage. I mean, the bottom of the lineup has proved time and time again that they're effective hitters and they're very good hitters in that. Yeah, I mean, Lauren Espen's batting eighth. She's hitting 325. Julia Jimenez batting 6th, 325. Lexi Voss, 7th, 286. And even Haley Ogenrod, 231, batting ninth, has had her moments this season. Voss with potential to do some damage here. Two runners in scoring position and a fresh count. First pitch on the way from Izzy Baruti. Change up right down the plate, called strike one. Rudy right-handed, so a little bit of the switch up from the starter, Jaden Vickers. Pitch number two to Voss. Low and outside. She loaded up it. Good discipline up there to watch pitch number two go by. Ball one. And but Rudy, her number is not the sharpest on the season, an 8.14 ERA. Runners hitting 3.57. This one hitting the gap between first and second base. One run's going to score. Jimenez going around third base in the slide of play, and she's safe. 
Lexi Voss stayed at first base, didn't advance. It was an awkward slide from Jimenez. Her knee kind of hit the dirt, and she bounced sideways. They're going to have Rutgers coaching staff going to have a quick word with the home plate umpire, Deanna Hunt, but Michigan scores two more, and the campaign continues in the bottom of the first. Yeah, hitters, as I was saying, hitters hitting 357 against Baruti with runners on base. That's just gone up thanks to Lexi Voss. A great throw in right field made by Fawcett. Uh, we had a look like we were going to have a play at the plate. We did have a play at the plate, uh, but not the cleanest of slides, but a good slide by Jimenez to get in there. And for Rutgers, with Stanley behind the plate, uh, didn't have the cleanest of tags, and it allows Michigan to stretch the lead to 6 nothing. and the Wolverines still are yet to be retired on the afternoon. Yeah, we mentioned that awkward slide. It might have been to Jimenez's benefit there. The tag, as you said, was a little awkward. She went to slide on that back right knee, and it kind of hit the dirt and almost caught. She bounced a little bit, but Lauren Espen's going to step up to the plate now. Watch his pitch number one go by, ball one. Lexi Voss over on first base, not really a threat to steal. 1-0 count on the way from Baruti. Big swing and chops it into the dirt towards first base. Espen seemed kind of fooled on that one, was way out in front of it. Voss over there on first base, ready to run. Big swing again from Espen, followed backwards into the net. Haley Hogenrod on deck. It'll be... It's 8-9 top right now. Michigan with potential to bat through here in the first inning. Barring a double play, they will. 1-2 on the way to Esman. Misses outside. The count will go 2-2. Two, two. And these Michigan hitters aren't making it any easier for first Vickers and now Baruti really not chasing any pitches outside the zone, showing good discipline at the plate. That's something Michigan's done really well as a team this year is just show discipline at the plate, as you said. The 2-2, as we say that, Too Esmond much discipline. strikes out looking. So the first out of Rutgers for this one comes on batter number eight. I think if he would have told Carol Hutchins before the game that the first out would have been eight batters in, I think she would have taken it. If you don't take that, I <laughs> think you might be crazy. A little greedy. Six runs already across. Here in the bottom of the first. Hoganrod stepping up to the plate now. Pitch number one goes by for ball one. Lexi Voss took a generous secondary lead over there at first base. Baruti checks the wristband, now goes to the windup. This one swung on and looped over towards the net right in front of us. Foul ball. Coming our way. Ball yesterday got hit into the booth. Really? Over towards our left through one of the open windows after going over the net. Can't remember quite who hit it. But Do we know who got the souvenir? <laughs> I think it got tossed back. But ah. yeah. 1-1 <laughs> on the way to Hoganrod. Rides inside, ball two. Lexi Blair over there in the on-deck circle. Baruti on the year is 49 walks compared to 34 strikeouts. Not exactly the numbers you're looking for. The 2-1 off speed just misses low. Cross the plate a little bit under the knees of Haley Hoganrod. So she's going to have a hitter's count when she steps back in. It'll be 3-1 with a runner on and only one out. Michigan holds a 6 to nothing lead. 3-1. Catches the outside corner. Hoganrod almost started trotting down to first base. Helen... Yeah. Little close in the outside corner. She thought she had that one. Let's see if she could regroup here. Still in the count, three and two. Full count, one out. Runner on first base. Baruti back to the windup. Off speed goes past the eyes of Hoganrod, and Michigan has officially batted through here in the bottom of the first. Lexi Blair stepping up to the plate for her second time today and second time this inning. Two runners on and only one out. Yeah, the breaking ball never broke there. An easy take for Hoganrod, and now my scorecard is messed up. Gone through the first inning, have to add a new column. We're batting around. 
Blair with a single or last time up. Ended up scoring on that for one of Michigan's six. Michigan six runs on six hits. Rutgers still scoreless and also still in search of their first hit. <laughs> Pitch number one from Baruti outside, ball one. Lexi Blair's legs were the catalyst in that early half of the first inning that we are still in. Reached on an infield hit, went from second to third on an infield hit, beating a throw, and then scored the first run to open the floodgates on a wild pitch. 1-0 to Blair. This one hit hard towards center field. A line drive and caught. That one hit right at Hawk Latubi. Blair got all of that one. So Rutgers escapes disaster there. Had that one been in the gap, it could have scored one, maybe two. That one hit right on the nose. But as they say, hit him where they ain't. And so finally some luck goes Rutgers' way in this inning after Michigan seemed to be reaping the fortune of a lot of using their legs and some Tough, tough luck hits that went against Jaden Vickers. First pitch into Ty Rodriguez. Line drive hit right at Taylor Lane at second base. So two hard hit balls for Blair and Rodriguez their second time through, but neither can find the gap. We're going to head to the top of the second inning, but not before Michigan puts up six in the bottom of one to come out to a startling lead here in this one. You're listening to WCBN Sports. Exactly what you wanted to start this one for Michigan. Six to nothing at the end of one. Uh, and, and now as Alex Duraco goes back out to the pitcher's circle, a long break for her uh, sitting in the dugout as she watched her team saddle her with a six-run lead. It was a scoreless first inning for Storaco, which is the usual, uh, but not quite in the fashion we're accustomed to. She was a little off at one point through 9 of 12 outside the strike zone, including a four-pitch walk, fell behind all three hitters she faced and was able to induce that inning ending double play. But let's see what she looks like coming out for her second inning of work here. Again, she's been on the bench for a while in that lengthy inning when Michigan just sent 11 batters to the plate. Uh, but let's watch Duraco closely, see if she could rebound after that atypical first inning. Yeah, Alex Drain and I, a familiar name to Michigan, Softball fans on WCBN mentioned in an earlier episode of East of the Rockies this season that if you're Michigan and Alex Duraco's on the mound, you really only need about typically three runs to score a game. Michigan currently sits at double that as we enter the second inning. A really comfortable position to be in if you're Michigan, but obviously don't want to take your foot off the throttle. Mm -hmm. we have timeout being called. Not really too sure why. Well, Storaco's last time out, uh, she struggled against Minnesota, gave up five runs on three hits and three walks in just two innings. And looks like we're finally set to go here. Play will resume. Stepping up to the plate for the first time is going to be Kirsten with Stanley. With Stanley, the catcher. Had an impressive outing so far behind the plate, looking to convert that defense into offense as she watches pitch number one go by, ball one. Bit outside. On that one by Sturaco, who was missing inside a lot in the first. Inside and high was where she missed. The wind is picked back up, blowing pretty much to dead center field, a little bit towards right field. Pitch number two, just above the letters. Great discipline up there from with Stanley. That's something that Rucker is obviously probably cognizant of is you know, we look at Alex Duraco's stats. We mentioned him before, 236 strikeouts. You can't give her anything extra. You can't let her get ahead in any count. As the 2-0 comes from Storaco, that one catches the outside corner for strike one. Makes Storaco earn every pitch and try to ramp up that pitch count as much as possible, get her out of the game as early as you can. That's pretty much the game plan for anybody playing against Michigan typically. 2-1 off speed, bounces out of the glove of Hannah Carson, but not before it's called a strike, so the count's going to go 2-2. And Rutgers is doing a decent job of that through four batters. The issue is they're already in a 6-0 hole. Corners playing even with the bag, infield playing back. 2-2, check swing, and they get her swinging. 
Strikeout number one for Storaco, number 237 on the season. And that looks more like it for Storaco. Fell behind in the count, 2 0. Looked perhaps like a repeat tail was unfolding from the first inning, but went right back at her on that nasty heater for that with Stanley tried to hold off, but went around. That's going to bring up Taylor Fawcett. First pitch on the way. Takes a big swing at the rise ball, comes up empty. Sirocco out to an early lead in this one. Nineteen and three record on the season for Alex Sirocco. Pitch number two to Fawcett. Rise ball again. She doesn't take a swing at this one and makes the right call. Sirocco ranks second nationally with 12.9 strikeouts. Her seven innings just recorded her first one on the day to with Stanley. 1-1 one, one hit on the ground towards Taylor Bump. Fielding on her left hand and fires over to first base. Great play. That's going to be out number two of this inning. Nice play by Bump. Made that one look easy. Got it in the webbing of her glove and then fired on the run. Plenty of time to get Fawcett at first. Those balls in the gap between third base and shortstop, they're always tough. Taylor Bump. Great defensive play to just cut it off on a straight line. If she misses it, Natalia Rodriguez is right back there, but if she had gone back for that ball, might not have had enough time. So after the first two batters get sat down, and this is Iliopoulos is going to step up to the plate and try to get something going here for the Scarlet Knights with two outs. You watch his pitch number one go by, though, for a called strike one. Iliopoulos hitting just 189 on the season. Pitch number two's foul backwards into the net, so Soraka way out in front, 0-2. On deck is the shortstop Workman. Good cut on that one by Iliopoulos right back to the screen. See if she could straighten it out here, but already in an 0-2 hole, not where you want to be against Alex Soraka. The 0-2 changeup got her swing and dribbled down the line in foul territory. Bump doing a nice job letting that one roll foul. The speed of Iliopoulos, if... Had she played that one, she would have reached safely pretty easily. Yeah, that had base hit written all over it. But trickled foul, tailing off. Sraco looking at the wristband now, getting her signs. Settling back in, spinning the ball on the right hand. Takes a deep breath. Now to the windup. The 0-2 to Iliopolis. This one hit hard. In the gap towards right center field, and that one's going to drop down. Great piece of hitting there by Iliopoulos. Not getting phased by the 0-2 count. Just roping it to the opposite field. Great piece of hitting, as you said. And first hit of the day for Rutgers comes five batters in. Great piece of hitting indeed. Not trying to do too much. Just throws her hands at it and lets the velocity of Storaco do the work. It's going to bring up the graduate student, Keanu Workman. First pitch to Workman, rise ball high and outside. Carson slips on over to it. Eliopoulos only two for three this year on stolen base attempts. Pitch number two goes way high out of the glove of Hannah Carson. She's going to look at third base. It took Carson a minute to get over to it. Had to kind of fumble around right back at the wall. So 2-0 again. Here is Storaco falling behind yet another hitter. And now with a runner in scoring position. Not as high stakes with Michigan up 6-0, but certainly don't want to let her score. The hitters count. Called the strike right down Broadway. Workman just didn't want any piece of that one. And over in the on-deck circle is Haley Hockletubi. We have a baseball from... Batting practice across the way, make its way into the field, so we got a quick timeout. You think someone hit it that far, or it was just thrown over? Because that would be a bomb. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't quite know. Maybe it bounced in between the two fences, but yeah, as you said, if that one just made its way, that's an absolute shot. 2-1, change up on the outside corner, called strike two. Nice job dotting the outside corner, and once again a strike away from sending us to the bottom of the second and keeping Rutgers off the scoreboard. 
Iliopoulos is going to be running on contact. Two outs. This one rides inside and glances off the left forearm of Kiana Workman. So Storocco, after getting the first two outs. Actually, we're... Is she being called back? Correction. It looks like it hit the butt end of the bat. So she's going to step back up. That one's going to go down as a foul ball. Well, credit Workman trying to, on the stealth, trying to be a little sly, knowing she's facing Storocco, trying to get down to first on a ball that didn't even hit her. She has went right down the line but was called back. Yeah, one point umpire Deanna Hunt signaling on the bottom of the hand. The 2-2 from Storocco, big swing and fouled backwards into the net. Yeah, Hunt was all over the antics by Workman. Respect the play, though. I do. I would do it. <laughs> Two outs, one runner in scoring position. It's Iliopoulos over on second base after her single into the right center gap. The 2-2 on the way from Storocco. Change up, hit hard, foul. Workman really staying alive here. Fouled the, fouled the rise ball back and then doing a nice job topping over the off speed down the third baseline, just getting a piece of it. And so there will be a seventh pitch of this at-bat. Brief mound meeting between battery mates. Just some advanced analysis. Workman hitting only 216 this season, but hitting 367 with runners in scoring position. 2-2 Two -two on the way again. Followed backwards over and out of the stadium. Yeah, she is making Storocco work, unable to put her away. Rocco taking her time, checking the wristband, spinning the ball on the right hand. Seems to be in complete control here. The 2-2. Rise ball tries to get her to chase, but Workman not phased. The count's going to go full. Great turn at bat by Workman. Will be a nice pitch upcoming. Full count, two outs, change up on the outside corner, just missing. What an at-bat. Yeah, Workman really making the most of that one there. And more importantly than anything else, making Alex Dorocco throw a ton of pitches in that at-bat. That's going to bring up the lefty graduate student, Haley Hockletubi. If you're Storocco, just go right after her. You're, you have a six-run lead. First pitch swung on and popped foul. Hannah Carson makes her way over to it. And that's an efficient out. One pitch. And we're going to head to the bottom of the second inning. Rutgers tallies their first hit of the game, but still scoreless. Michigan leads 6-0 as we head to bottom two. So a better showing that inning by Storocco still doesn't look her sharpest. Credit the Rutgers hitters. Credit where credit is due. Work some good at bats. Iliopoulos with the gapper. Workman with the 10-pitch walk. But at the end of the day, 6-0 Michigan as we head to the bottom of the second and heading back out for more work and relief is Baruti, who entered after Jaden Vickers could not record an out. Due up for the Wolverines, going to be 3-4-5. Lou Allen, Taylor Bump, and Hannah Carson. Allen had a single her first time up. Ended up scoring off the stand-up triple from Taylor Bump. That was really the highlight of that first inning. Yeah, Vickers faced six batters. They all reached five on hits, one on a walk. And left with two runners on base. Those both came around to score. So her line, she is finished. Five hits, six runs, one walk. 29 pitches, 16 of them were for strikes. And then Baruti came in, gave up some hard contact. A line out to center field by Blair, a line out to second base by Rodriguez, but was able to sort of do the job. She did allow both inherited runners to score. We'll see if she could give Rutgers some innings here. Already down in the game, 6 nothing, And, of course, this is a double header. So game number two on tap. Got to preserve some pitching for that one. Yeah, that doubleheader, as you mentioned, a big factor here is if Michigan could get through this one, get out early with a run rule, that'd be extremely beneficial to them as a team. First pitch on the way to Lou Allen. 
Change up bounces past her shins. Ball one. Allen with the infield hit, hit it toward the five hole on the left side of the infield, fielded on the backhand, and Workman tried to go to third, but not in time to nab Blair. 1-0, off speed on the outside corner. Good pitch from Baruti. With Stanley taking her time, gets her signs from the dugout now, settling back in. Lou Allen with a 1-1 count. That one outside, ball two. Looking at Lou Allen's stats up on the scoreboard, extremely impressive. 361 batting average, nine home runs, 38 RBIs. 2-1 from Baruti on the way. This one hit hard up the middle line drive. That one's going to drop down for a single. Lou Allen's two for two. Scorcher by Allen. And Michigan gets the leadoff runner on again as the Wolverines look to add to what is already a six-run advantage in the bottom of the second. Taylor Bump's going to come up to the plate for the second time today. And Bump had that big hit back in the first, a triple. Down to right field, and we're going to get a pinch runner here for Allen. Kaylee Rodriguez is going to take her place on first base, the freshman from Miami, Florida. Rodriguez has scored 10 runs on the season, has come in pretty regularly as a pinch runner for Lou Allen. Bump looking to do more damage here. Had a two-run stand-up triple down the right field line her last time up. She watches pitch number one go by. Ball one over in the on-deck circle is Hannah Carson. And Bump homer yesterday. The extra base surge continues. Nine home runs on the season for her. 1-0 to Taylor Bump. Off speed. Right down the plate, called strike one. Bump being real selective up there at the plate. She knows what pitch she wants and probably going to wait for it and then get after it when it comes. Baruti settling in now. The 1-1. One, one. This one hit. Soft line drive to second base. Lane flips it to second base. Double play, but Bump legs it out. Yeah, that one just hit too softly. Flared off the end of the bat to second. Uh, nice job by Lane to get the lead runner. And then Bump working her way down the line. Beat that one out easily. Good slide there from Kaylee Rodriguez to kind of break that double play up as well. Pinch runner wasn't able to advance but did her job. So Taylor Bump going to reach safely for the second time. Fresh count to Hannah Carson now. Swings on the first pitch and pops it up into foul territory and right into the glove of Lynn Cavage. She was playing up in, in just the perfect position. So two quick outs, and that's going to bring up Julia Menez with one runner on. Lynn Cavage pounced right on that one. And just what the doctor ordered for Baruti so far here in the second as she works in relief of Vickers in her second inning of work. Uh, Izzy Baruti. Pitching very well in this inning. Fresh count to Julia Menez now with two outs. First one high and outside, ball one. Michigan that first time through the order was pretty much unstoppable. Faltering a little bit here with some bright spots from Lou Allen. Pitch number two to Jimenez, off speed, called strike one. Baruti getting that off speed pitch over. Michigan hitters are taking it. She's done a nice job with it so far, using it to complement her fastball. 1-1 one, one set to deliver from Izzy Baruti. Off speed gets off the glove with Stanley. Taylor Bump's going to reach second base very easily. That one was boxed around there behind the plate by with Stanley. Not really sure what happened. Maybe a little bit of miscommunication between pitcher and catcher. She flipped the glove upside down and brought it to her right shoulder. And it bounced right off the wrist and then rolled back to the dugout. Just kind of an awkward play. So there is still two outs, but the runner now in scoring position. Taylor Bump over on second base. Big swing from Jimenez. Comes up empty. Count's going to even out 2-2. Blew it right by her. Big swing 
for sure. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a runner on second base. Two's across the board, and number 22 up to bat as well. Jimenez watches this one outside. The count's going to go full. Full count, two outs. Michigan with potential to tack on another run. Rutgers looking to escape this one without letting any up. They're still in that big six to nothing hole. Certainly can't allow any more runs if you're Rutgers and want to get back into this one. Full count. This one hit hard up the middle towards Taylor Lane. Line drive. So Rutgers escapes the second. Holding Michigan scoreless, but the lead, as I said before, still six runs for Michigan. Hard contact continues against Baruti, but instead of dropping, they're finding the gloves of the Rutgers fielders. That's three lineouts that Baruti has induced so far, but she'll certainly take it. And Michigan, after a first time through the order, found a lot of holes, a few infield hits. Not the case second time, but as we've said, they've got that six-run lead through two innings, six to nothing the score, and Alex Storacco back out to the pitcher circle. It's going to be nine, then top two up for the Scarlet Knights. Taylor Lane followed by Peyton Linkavich and then Gabrielle Calloway. Lane struggling at the plate this year, hitting just 0.98. But it should be said that her stellar defensive play has been extremely beneficial and extremely impactful for Rutgers this season. She's been at the right place, right time so far today. Caught a pair of line drives and fielded a nice little flare off the bat of bump that she turned into a fielder's choice. Quick little meeting on the mound and we're going to be set to go. The sun is... Retreated behind the clouds a little bit, but still nice and warm outside. We've got our window cracked open here in the booth. The window's wide open. The temperature's still sitting at 71 degrees. So here we go, the second baseman, Taylor Lane, stepping up to the plate now. Corner's playing up a little bit in anticipation of a bunt. She tries to lay down a sneaky bunt, but follows it backwards into the net, pops it up. Lane, the junior from Tinton Falls, New Jersey. 0-1 to Lane, check swing. She went pretty much all the way through. Storacco in complete command of this at bat. The count sits at 0-2. Storacco doing a good job of getting ahead of Lane. That's something that's plagued her so far today, falling behind a lot of hitters. 0-2, check swing goes past the eyes. Lane. Not greedy enough to go after that one. Count's going to go 1-2. Straco taking a deep breath now. Settling back in. The 1-2 on the way. Big swing and a miss. There's another strikeout from Alex Straco. Just blew it by Taylor Lane. Second on the day for Straco. Made quick work of Lane. There in that at-bat, she looked like her dominant self, perhaps for the first time today. She's labored a little bit. Two walks, giving up a single. Falling behind in a lot of counts, as we said, but dominant there. First pitch to Linkavage goes past her eyes. Her eyes ball missing high. That last one, number 238 on the season for Alex Duraco. That total only figures to go up some more. Gabrielle Calloway over there in the on-deck circle trying to time Storacco up, get every advantage she can. Pitch number two catches the outside corner. And then Cabbage flew out to Natalia Rodriguez who made a nice play, ranging into foul, tor to foul territory, moving far over to her right to snag it. 1-1 one, one in Linkavage, big swing and a miss, strike two. We credited the record sitters for their discipline, uh, their first time through the order. Not so much the case here so far in the third, chasing a lot of pitches and not able to catch up to those high heaters. 
One, two, Dylan Cabbage. This one swung on and missed again. Another strikeout for Alex DiRocco. And that one was probably at the top of the zone, and she just blew it right by her. Like, Cabbage had no shot. So back-to-back -back Ks is to open the frame for Storocco. Going back to what you mentioned about Rutgers being real disciplined that first inning, obviously they were very locked in, especially with a pitcher like Alex Storocco. But after you let up six runs in the bottom half of that first inning, it kind of gets to desperation time. You don't want to get run ruled. you got to just... Put as many on the board as you can as quickly as possible as pitch number one to Callaway is called a strike in the outside half. Gets that high strike there at the letters. Starocco looks more in her element now, perhaps settling into this game after the so-so bumpy start to begin it. Spinning ball on the right hand, now to the windup. Change up. Beautiful pitch from Starocco for strike number two. That one was just picture perfect. Nasty change up, buckling Callaway's knees. Callaway walked on four pitches back in the first. She's seeing a different Storocco here in the third. Deep breath from Storocco looking for strikeout number three of this inning. The 0-2 check swinging off the bat of Callaway, so that 0-2 count's going to remain the same. Another pitch up in the zone. Callaway didn't want to go around, but clipped her bat. Alex Dorocco sitting with a .091 ERA. 0-2 again from Storocco. This one's swinging a miss. That's three strikeouts this inning. Alex Dorocco absolutely dominating the Rutgers hitters in the top of the third. Good morning, good afternoon, good night in the third for Storocco. That looks more like the Storocco we've grown accustomed to watching this season. And so it's still six to nothing, Michigan, as we head into the bottom of the third. Four strikeouts now on the afternoon for Storocco. Made quick work of the side there. Got Lane on four pitches. Got Callaway on four pitches and five on Link Cabbage. It is going to be Izzy Baruti back out there for some more work. So we head to the bottom of the third. Here at Alumni Field, Michigan with the big, comfortable lead, six to nothing. Went scoreless last inning, but that didn't matter. Six runs in the bottom half of the first on an impressive offensive attack. They batted through. Rutgers just didn't seem to have any answers. Jaden Vickers struggled early. Lindsey Broody has since come in and kind of put a halt to that little rally. She's done all, all besides allowing the two inherited runners to score, she's pretty much done all. You could have asked of her so far. Some hard contact, but has kept Michigan from really blowing this game wide open. Although a six run deficit. Seven, eight, nine is the order to up for Michigan. It's going to be Lexi Voss and Lauren Espin on deck and in the hole, Haley Hoganrod. Voss had a two RBI single her last time up back in the first inning. And Voss the first batter that Baruti face in this ball game. Everybody settling in here. Michigan baseball game still yet to get underway. Wind blowing lightly towards right center field. Boss Settling in very early with Stanley was still getting her signs and Lexi Voss was just locked in. First pitch, missing on the outside half, ball one. Michigan hitters going to be locked in this next time through on Izzy Baruti. Obviously, like we said, this is the second time Voss has seen Baruti. As pitch number two goes by, Voss is going to have a hitter's count 2-0. Middle of the infield playing back on the edge of the infield grass. Corners playing pretty even with the bases. 2-0 to Voss is hit deep towards left field. This one back to the wall going and gone! A solo home run from Lexi Voss. An absolute shot 
over the head of the left fielder, Iliopoulos, and Michigan extends the lead to seven. That ball just kept carrying, and Iliopoulos sure looked like she thought she was going to have a play on it. And then she ran out of room, ran right into that wall. That ball was gone. The wind isn't as strong as it was before. Earlier it was blowing more towards right center field, uh, but that one out towards left. And not even the died down wind could stop that one. And it's seven nothing Michigan. An absolute shot from Lexi Voss, her first home run of the season. Great start for her today, two for two. Pitch number one to Lauren Essman, change up on the outside corner, called strike one. Lexi Voss, as we mentioned, was the first hitter to face Izzy Baruti. Had a single and a first time up for two RBIs. Tacks on an extra RBI, knocking herself all the way around there. That pitch to Lauren Essman swung on and chopped backwards into the net. Espen looks on down to third base to Coach Carol Hutchins, giving her a few pointers, struck out looking her last time up. 26 strikeouts on the season. That one off speed, missing low and outside for ball one. Haley Hoganrod in the on deck circle. We'll see the top of the order again in this one. No outs. No runners on. The one two goes low and outside. Flashing back to that home run from Lexi Voss. I mean, she got absolutely all of that ball. Really well struck. Broody taking her time, looking over at her dugout, a little confused, and finally setting in. The wind up on 2 2. Change up hit hard back right at her. Line drive goes off the glove. Fires over to first base and it gets past the first baseman. Espen's going to be aggressive and take second base on the overthrow. Well, Baruti got her glove on it. Had time and she really fired it over to first. A little low. I don't think it hit the dirt. It seems like a, a play that Callaway should have made. Uh, Baruti really threw a heater over. She had to in part, though, because Espen was running up the line. And uh, now a runner at second. We'll see how that scored. I presume an error. I don't know on who. That is going to go down as an error. We'll give you... Yeah, it's going to be a throwing error. So first pitch to Hoganrod. Check swing goes off of her bat. No outs and a runner on second base. Michigan... In a very good position here. They're up 7 nothing in the bottom half of the third inning. Tallied six runs back in the first. If you're just joining us, this has been an offensive onslaught from the Wolverines. Hoganrod, good set of eyes up there watching that one go just inside. The count's going to even out 1-1. Lexi Blair on deck. It'll be her third time up in this one. This is exactly what... You wanted if you were Michigan after the offense was held in check yesterday. Brody's change up again, missing low. That one crossed the plate just under the knees of Haley Hoganrod. That's been sitting over on second base. You love to see the aggressive base running. That's something that Michigan has really taken pride in this season. It's worked so far today for sure. 2 1 catches the outside corner. Count's going to even out. Broody gets herself out of that little bit of a hole. So Haley Hoganrod will have to adjust for a two-strike approach here. Broody checking the wristband. Now to the windup. The 2-2. This one hit hard towards third base. Bounces up to Lynn Cabbage, and she can't feel that cleanly. Haley Hoganrod's going to reach safely. So Michigan has hit some hard hit balls for sure today but Rutgers is fielding has not done their pitching any favors whether it was Baruni now or Vickers to start the game the fielding has not been at its peak Lexi Blair had a single her first time up lined out to center field her last time up for one to two on the day we're going to have a meeting on the mound Michigan has just been Making hard contact on pretty much everything all day. 
I mean, that first hit from Lexi Blair was a line drive right back at Jaden Vickers, hit so hard that it knocked her glove off and then reached on the infield single. And then her last time up, lined out to Haley Hocklatubi in center field. Hocklatubi was playing relatively deep and didn't have to come in too far for that when she hit it right on the seams. Blair ignited. Got everything started as the catalyst back in the first, using her legs to race around the bases. Got to first on the infield hit. Scored on a wild pitch. Long meeting over there, and looks like we're finally set to go. Both Rutgers coaches are going to head to the dugout. The infield back to their respective positions. Michigan in a position to do some more damage. They're up 7 to nothing. No outs here in the bottom of the third, and two runners on, one in scoring position. Esman on second, Hoganrod on first base. And your star of this lineup, Lexi Blair, stepping up to the plate. 418 batting average, six home runs, 22 RBIs. First pitch goes and catches the outside for strike one. A high strike there from Hunt behind the dish. We don't have the best angle of home plate over here from the first baseline, but that one looked a little bit outside. That one well outside as it bounces into the glove with Stanley Lowe as well. Blair taking her time with Stanley behind the plate. Getting the signs and then relaying them. 1-1 one, one count on the way. Two runners in scoring position. Blair showed bunt but pulled it back last second. Kind of be 1-2 for her. As much as Coach Carol Hutchins loved to play small ball, you'd think with two strikes here, especially with a hitter like Lexi Blair up, you would just let her swing away here. 1-2 goes into the dirt for ball number two. You would have to think so, especially with the way Blair has swung the bat today. The line out to center, and then her infield hit was a shot off the glove of the pitcher, Vickers. The pitch, this one hit high in the air towards the left center gap and filing into the glove of Iliopoulos. That one hung up in the air for a long time. That one, the really first time we've seen Lexi Blair not hit the ball at a scorching velocity today. That one just kind of a pop-up into the left center gap. That's going to bring up the tie Rodriguez, but still only one out and still runners on base. Rodriguez hit the ball on the nose her last time out, lining out to Lane at second base and drew a walk back in the first, came around to score on the triple by bump. First pitch watches it go by, called strike one. Lou Allen in the on-deck circle. She's two for two today. Michigan going to try to get as many of these across as they can. If they could get out of this game early with the run rule, it would be very helpful considering today's a doubleheader. It would be able to cut the day short. Nat Rod watches that one go by. Counts going to even out at 11. Baruti with the windup. That one just missing for ball number two. Baruti, the graduate student from Redondo Beach, California. Set to deliver the 2-1 to Rodriguez. Change up, riding high in the zone. It's gonna be a hitter's count. 3-1 for Natalia Rodriguez. He's been making solid contact all day today, and or really all series, she had that double in the first inning yesterday into the left center gap. 3-1, missing just low. She's going to head on down to first base. Works the walk on 3-1, and now it's real danger time for Rutgers. Bases loaded, only one out, and the two Michigan power hitters stepping up. One at the plate and one on deck, Lou Allen. Lou Allen has swung the bat well today. Basically all of Michigan's hitters have swung the bat well today. An infield hit 
to short on the stop by Workman in the hole in the first, and then a shot right back up the middle her last time up in the second. First pitch on the way to Lou Allen. Hit hard down the third baseline. One run's going to score. Hoganrod rounding third. And she's going to reach a two RBI single from Lou Allen. Iliopoulos did a great job getting to the line and stopping that one. What would have been three runs. Holds up Natalia Rodriguez on third base. Lou Allen now three for three on the day with three singles. Have a day, Lou Allen. First pitch swinging. Uh, eats up. Linkavage at third and no shot at getting to that one the way it was hit. So hard down the line. Tucked it right inside the bag. That's going to bring up Taylor Bump with runners on the corners. And only one out first pitch. Change up called strike one. As we've said multiple times before, Bump. Very good power hitter. If she could get the ball to the outfield with the speed of Ty Rodriguez on third base, she could see her tag. 0-1 to bump. Big swing comes up empty. So Baruti way ahead in this count. 0-2. Still only one out, though. Hannah Carson over on deck. Correction. We Looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter for Hannah Carson. It's going to be Thais Gonzalez, who's over there on deck. 0-2 to bump, change up, hit deep towards left field. This one back, no doubt. See ya. Three run home run from Taylor Bump on the 0-2 pitch in Michigan. Just won't slow down. And that was a no doubter. If Voss's home run to begin the inning was a bit of a skyscraper, this was just a towering shot off the bat of Taylor Bump who continues to rack up the power numbers. She homered yesterday, another today. That's double-digit home runs on the season. She edges out Lou Allen, her teammate, beats Allen there by one shot as the first Wolverine to double-digit blasts. And it is 12 to nothing. Michigan just pouring it on against Rutgers. Six runs in the bottom of the first, scoreless in the second, six runs here in the third inning. I mean, Michigan just can't be stopped right now. There's a bomb by bump. And that 3-4 that combo in the middle of the order. We knew Lou Allen had never really put it all together, but we knew what she was capable of, and she has done that this year. Her average is up there. The power numbers are there. Bump was a bit more of a mystery. Stru struggled her first three seasons as she has put the whole package together. And with that 3-4 in the middle of the order. Michigan is very dangerous, and we are seeing it today. So with no runners on, that's going to bring Thais Gonzalez up to the plate, her first at-bat of this series. She watches pitch number one go by, called strike one. A veteran presence in this Michigan lineup. Gonzalez, a graduate student. Pitch number two goes by inside, ball one. That's back-to-back -back games with a home run for Taylor Bump. That ball absolutely crushed towards left field. Her home run yesterday was a line drive, got out in a hurry. That one, as you said, a skyscraper. Soft line drive in the hole between shortstop and third base, and Gonzalez is going to reach. Not fielded cleanly at all. I think that's going to be rule to base hit. Would have been a tough play. Workman circling to her right. Would have had to make the throw on the run across her body. And with speed like Tyus Gonzalez, there's no way you make that play. Still waiting on the ruling. Got to think it's a hit. It is going to go down as a hit, so Gonzalez tallies a single. She's now one for one on the day. That's going to bring up Julia Menez. Had a double her first time up. Lined out her last time. One out. Gonzalez over on first base is first pitch is called a strike to Jimenez. Well, barring a double play, Michigan will bat around for the second time in three innings today. Lexi Voss led off the inning with a homer to left. She stands in the on deck circle. 0 oh, 1 to Jimenez outside. As you said, would be 
the second time Michigan's batted through the order today. It's just something about those odd number innings, huh? Six runs in the bottom of the first. Six runs here in the third. 1-1 one, one changeup right down the plate. Great pitch from Baruti for strike number two. Baruti's just here to wear this one. Just get Rucker through it. Their chances at a win are all but shot. She's just got to eat up these innings for the Scarlet Knights. 1-2 to Jimenez. This one popped up over towards us. That one's going to fall into the stands and bounce up right to our right-hand side. Wow, we are getting some excitement. A one-hop off the stands coming our way. I oh. should have dove through the window for it. That would have been unbelievable. That would have been electric. That would have been great. Jimenez is going to settle back in now. 1-2. <laughs> Very rarely strikes out, only eight on the season. She's going to look to fight these off, and as I say that, comes up empty. Great pitch in the outside corner from Baruti. So no double play. So Michigan has batted through for the second time this game. Lexi Voss stepping up to the plate, two for two on the day. And you got to think, after Baruti's let up six runs this inning, that home run that started it all has got to be sitting in the back of her mind. That's when you know things are going well for your offense. You're batting around for the second time today, and it's only the third inning. Pitch number one on the way to Lexi Voss. Catches the plate for strike number one. Thais Gonzalez still over there on first base. Lexi Voss, two for two, single and a home run, three RBIs. She watches that one go by outside. Have another pinch hitter on deck. Kiki Thole in the on deck circle. With the 12 round lead, Wolverines using their bench, getting a lot of players some reps. 1 1 catches the outside corner for 1 2. Boss hitting 318. Hitting 357 with two outs. Baruti to the windup. The one two swung on and hit foul over towards first base. That one doesn't have enough spin to make its way back in. Two strikes, one ball, and Lexi Voss settling back in now, just trying to fight her way through this at bat. The one two missing outside. Boss trying to keep that perfect average for this game going. Her third time up, second time up this inning. 2-2. Two -two. This one hit towards third base on the ground. Throw across the diamond and routine play for Lynn Cabbage over to Galloway. So we're going to head to the top of the fourth inning, but not before Michigan tallies six runs for the second time today. The Wolverines using the long ball in that inning. Lexi Voss got everything going with the solo shot to begin the frame. Taylor Bump with the exclamation mark. The three-run Titanic shot to left. Pushed the lead to 12-0. And if 6-0 wasn't insurmountable, I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Wolverines are sitting pretty here with the 12-0 lead. Sirocco is going to head back out there. The grounds crew prepping the field once more for the start of this inning. Taraco, after in the first inning she had to sit for forever, and now in the third inning she had to sit for forever. Certainly you'll take a 12-run lead, but you got to figure that's a little harder to keep your rhythm when you're sitting on the bench for 20 minutes at a time as your team bats around for the second time today. Michigan in run rule territory if they can keep this up. Do up first for Rutgers is Kayla Bach. We're going to have, looks like some substitutions on 
the end for Rutgers. Coaching staff having some quick conversations with home plate umpire Deanna Hunt. Long pause. Rocco not phased at all, dancing out there on the mound. She's had to wait long enough. Yep. She wants to get going. She is staring down Kayla Vock in the on deck circle. Taking her practice swings. And here we go. Rocco settling back in now. First pitch to box, swung on and missed. Right, she picks up right where she left off. Struck out her last three. She's retiring the side on strikes in the top of the third. Have some defensive substitutions for the Wolverines. Sierra Kirsten has taken Lexi Voss's, or sorry, Haley Hoganrod's place in left field. As pitch number two goes by for strike two, and Kiki Thole is taking Hannah Carson's spot behind the plate. Getting everyone some action, getting the starters a little rest before they have to go and play game number two. Oh, two from Sirocco, catches the outside corner. Three strike, strikeout, Kayla Bach sent back. Well, I guess I take back what I said because sitting on the bench did not cause her to miss a beat. Struck out the side in the third. Gets her first batter looking in the fourth. Straco's strikeout total has now surpassed 240. It's the first pitch to Kira with Stanley, or Kirsten with Stanley rather. Rise ball missing high. Two hundred and forty puts her now at ninth, standing alone in the nation in total strikeouts. That one again missing high, same pitch, rise ball, can't seem to get it in the zone. Two O is the count. Hitters count for Kirsten with Stanley stepping back in now over the on in the on deck circle is Taylor Fawcett. That one, no doubter, right down Broadway, called strike one. Straco turns around as a quick word with Natalia Rodriguez, now steps back into the circle. With Stanley was Straco's first strikeout victim on the afternoon, leading off the second. 2-1. Just misses the top of the zone with Stanley going to have her second hitter's count of this at bat. It'll be 3-1. Kirsten taking her ready steps out there in left field. Her first inning of defensive work. The 3-1 from Sirocco swung on and missed. Kiki Thole fires it back to her. It's going to be a full count now. With, with Stanley taking her time, settling back in now. The wind up from Sirocco. That one goes high, ball four with Stanley working a nice full count walk there. Lost her there. Good job by with Stanley to lay off the pitch way upstairs. Sure, Storocco wanted that one a little lower because the record hitters have been chasing that pitch right at the letters. But that one's just a little too tall. With Stanley, definitely a threat to steal bases. It's pitch number one, swung on and missed. Five stolen bases on the season. has only been caught stealing once. Rutgers might want to test the arm of Kiki Thole back there behind the plate and get some runners in scoring position. Definitely know they need them. The lead for Michigan, 12. Off-speed pitch. Hit down the third baseline, but foul. Fawcett now in a big hole, 0-2. Ty Rodriguez fires it back into Lou Allen. Hands it off to Alex Dorocco. The Rutgers bench showed a lot of energy early in this game, and yesterday especially, they've fallen pretty much silent here. Can't blame them being down 12 nothing. This one swung on and missed, and Sirocco sits down another one. They cannot catch up to that heater upstairs. And Sirocco has found her groove after a bit of a shaky beginning. She's really found what's working so far today. Second strikeout of this inning. 
That's going to bring up Iliopoulos. Had a single her last time up. Rutgers only hit on the day. It fell into that right center gap. Haley Hogan had covered a lot of ground, but had to field it off of one hop. Deep breath. And out of the windup. 0 1 on the way to Iliopolis. Right down the plate, called strike two. You know, with two strikes here on Iliopolis and two outs, I wouldn't be surprised to see with Stanley leave on the pitch. Maybe try for a little bit of a hit and run. Iliopolis had a decent hit last time, could advance the runner, especially with her speed on first base. This one's popped up, foul. And that one's got enough height to get over the net. That one's sky high, scraping the clouds. Count's going to remain 0-2. Is the Michigan baseball game finally getting going over there at Ray Fisher Stadium? Big series for them against Indiana. Took the opener yesterday. 0-2. The runner's going. Doesn't matter. Struck her out. Another three strikeout inning from Alex Storaco. Six straight outs on the strikeout for Storaco. As we are heading to the bottom of the fourth. It's 12 nothing the Michigan lead. Six in the first, six in the third for the Wolverines. batted around in each of those frames. So if the pattern holds, Michigan will not score here in the fourth. See what happens though. The Wolverines will have eight, nine, and one due up in the order. Izzy Baruti staking her spot back out there. We're gonna have two new hitters we haven't seen yet today. It's gonna be Kiki Thole in the eight hole, followed by Sierra Kirsten batting ninth. And then Lexi Blair, of course, at the top of the order. Kiki Thole hitting 214 on the season has only had 14 at bats, but this tally three hits. One of those was a double. Also, tack on two RBIs. Sierra Carson had started a lot of the season, started 38 games for this team. Twenty-one hits on the season and ninety-four at bats for a two twenty-three batting average. Saw her once yesterday. And here we go. Players all take their positions on the field and Kiki Thole steps up to that right handed batter's box. Here's some cheers from the crowd for Kiki Thole as she steps in for the first time. Baruti checks that wristband on the left hand now to the windup. First pitch missing low. Kirsten over there in the on deck circle trying to time up Baruti. Pitch number two on the way. Outside, ball two. It's going to be a hitter's count for Thole. Action in the Rutgers bullpen has ceased since last inning. There was a little bit going on down there. The 2-0 again missing low. 3-0 count on the way to Kiki Thole. Most likely we'll just see her bail out. Home plate umpire Deanna Hunt confirms the scoreboard. Signals out 3-0 and here it comes. This one right down the plate. Hitting her spot finally is Izzy Baruti. Couldn't seem to find the plate for those first three. So Bull going to be able to swing away here on 3-1. The pitch just catches the outside corner. Full count now. Baruti battling her way back. Bull stepping back in. Situated. Right about in the middle of that batter's box. Full count pitch, swung on, hit deep towards center field in the gap. And that's going to go over a solo home run 
for Kiki Thole. How about that one? Get your at bat and make the most of it. The lead now 13. Well, she had that bat on her shoulders for five pitches. She certainly took it off for the sixth one and didn't miss it, crushing it in the, into the left center field gap. A bomb by Kiki Thole. That a, little, one, a little insurance run. 13 nothing, Michigan. That one didn't look like it was going to get over. I mean, yeah. it was a line drive in the gap. That was an absolute shot. Off the bat, I thought it was going to be a one-hopper, one-hopping the wall, and that thing just kept carrying. That's going to bring up Sierra Kirsten. So Kiki Thole making the most of her at bat. Have a day. Kirsten now looking for a spark of her own. First pitch right down the plate called strike one. Kiki Thole, what in that bat? Saw three straight balls go by, bailed out on the 3-0. Watch the next one go by, so full count, and then just absolutely ropes a home run on that full count pitch. Sierra Kirsten follows one off. The count's going to go 0-2 now. That's three home runs now that Baruti has surrendered in relief. She is just out there at this point to give Rutgers innings and finish this one off. Audrey LeClaire in the on-deck circle. She'll pinch hit for Lexi Blair. Thirteen runs on twelve hits for Michigan. O two to Kirsten again, fouled back into the net. Long, smooth swing. Here's some cheers from the Michigan stands. Good crowd of family and friends on hand today. A beautiful day for a ball game. 0-2 rides inside ball one. I mean, these past two days, the game last night and this one, first of the doubleheader, you couldn't ask for better weather. Not too hot. Sun's not beating down on you. Just nice and warm. As you say, beautiful day for a ball game. The 1-2. Kirsten hits this one foul over towards Hutch at third base. She quick scampers out of the way. Didn't want to try and field that one. I think it's safe to say Coach Hutchins has passed having to prove herself by trying to field <laughs> ground balls at third base. I would say so. Baruti checks the wristband, now goes to the windup on 1-2. Kirsten, big swing, just catches a piece of it. Kirsten, a lot of foul balls, hitting it back to the screen a few times down the third base line. Actually, it looks like she... Didn't tip it. It looked like that was. Just it looked like it of it. kind of changed. Hutchins is running down the third base line to talk with the ump, throwing her hands up. What happened? So perhaps she just whiffed on that one, and the catcher didn't catch it. Guess so, but that is going to bring up the pinch hitter. It's going to be Audrey Leclaire up to the plate now. Claire hitting 200 on the season. Only has five RBIs, but has scored five runs. Has put in her time as a pinch hitter when she's been called, or a pinch runner, rather, when she's been called upon, and has done her job well. No runners on and one out as Audrey LeClaire steps to the plate and is met with all sorts of cheers from the Michigan side. Nice to see... Michigan emptying the bench here with the 13 run lead, getting everyone into the action. First pitch on the way, popped up in shallow left field, and that one's going to be roped in by the shortstop Workman. So LeClaire getting aggressive on that first pitch, but can't find a hole. That's going to bring up Jessica Garman. Garmin only has one at-bat on the season, but in that one at-bat has a hit and an RBI, so has been really effective in her time up. Garmin stepping up now. Only one batting glove on that front left hand.
Takes a deep breath. Now settling in in that right-handed batter's box. The bat cocked over the right shoulder. Gets aggressive on the first pitch. Pops it up in pretty much the exact same spot LeClaire did. Shallow left field. Workman makes a way over to it. So we're going to head to the top of the fifth. But not before Michigan tacks on one more insurance run on the monster slam from Kiki Thole. The lead for Michigan, 13. Deja vu to end the inning there. LeClaire and Garman each going down first pitch, swinging with the pop-up to the shallow left field where Workman flagged it down, playing short. 13-0, as you said, through four. 12 hits on the day for Michigan, just one for Rutgers against Alex Storacco, whose day appears to be done. If Storacco is going to take a seat on the bench, I mean, she did her work as well as she could have. It's going to be the pitching substitution, as you said. Sarah Schaefer is going to step into the circle. We've seen Schaefer in limited capacity this season. Has only thrown 11 innings, but... In those 11 innings, she's looked pretty good. Only a 1 2 7 ERA. So the book is closed on Storaco. Four innings, surrenders that lone hit. Walk three, command was a bit of an issue. Was struck out seven in the process. Lowers her ERA from 0 0.93 to 0 0.90. That's just crazy impressive. <laughs> Dominant per usual. Zero point nine zero has Alex Duraco at ninth in the nation in earned run average. I mean, compared to the other, it's just ridiculous. The person right in front of her, Liz Murphy from Detroit Mercy, has thrown sixteen innings with a point eight eight ERA. Alex Duraco thrown over a hundred and thirty with a point nine zero. After tallying those last two outs of that inning, Workman's going to go back out on the offensive end and lead this one off. Getting 273 is the leadoff batter this season. Sarah Schaefer going to get to step in and show us what she's got here. Some defensive adjustments. Audrey LeClaire is going to take Lexi Blair's place in center field. First pitch from Schaefer. Rise ball up in the zone. Kiki Thole still back there behind the plate. Workman walked her only time up. The 1-0 from Schaefer. This one hit hard towards right field. Diving catch in right field is Lexi Voss. That ball hit on the screws. But Lexi Voss doing her job, helping out her teammate Sarah Schaefer. And what a play. What beautiful diving catch by Voss, ranging to her right into the gap. A scorcher hit on the screws, as you said, but she saw that right off the bat. Dove the full extension, timed it perfectly. Made it look very easy, made it look routine, but was nothing but. And a hard first out for Michigan and Sarah Schaefer here in the fifth. So Haley hawk is going to stay on the bench. There's going to be a pinch hitter for her. It's going to be number 27, Megan Herka. First pitch on the way from Schaefer. Big swing from Herka. This one going foul and covering a lot of ground in left field as Sierra Kirsten. Big swing from Herka on that first pitch. But Sierra Kirsten able to track that one all the way to the wall on the left field side. Very effective out for Schaefer. One pitch, one out. Yeah, Kirsten doing a nice job there over deep in the corner on the high fly ball. Shielding herself against the wall. Going to have another pinch hitter. This one for Taylor Lane. It's going to be Courtney Wild, the sophomore from Nutley, New Jersey. Fresh count from Schaefer. That one catches the outside corner. Strike one. Schaefer showing great command over the edge of the edges of this plate. Takes a deep breath. Now settles back in. Twist to the right. The wind up. This one hit on the ground. Right back to her. Fields it cleanly over to first base. And a 1-2-3 inning for Michigan. 
And that will do it for game number one of this doubleheader. A run rule for Michigan. I mean, absolutely dominant performance. Six runs in the bottom of the first inning. Went scoreless in the second. Six runs in the bottom of the third inning. And then the lone run in the fourth coming from a solo shot from Kiki Thole. I mean, they were firing on all cylinders all morning long. Only three runs for the offense yesterday. Probably left wanting a bit more. Despite the victory, well, they got them all today. 13 runs. And dominant, as you said, 13 Zero run rule Rick victory that ends halfway through the f fifth inning. Uh, a great performance by the Wolverines. Staraka wasn't her sharpest. Didn't have to be with the run support she got. 13 three home runs, one by Bump, one by Voss, one by Thole off the bench in the pinch hit appearance. And uh, Michigan, the victors in the game one. That is going to do it for our coverage of game one, but we will be. Right back here for game two in just about half an hour. I would like to thank you for listening to game one. My name is Charlie Brigham. It has been me and Jared Greenspan alongside me. We'll meet you back here in a little bit for game two. We're going to leave it for now like we always do. With a good afternoon and a go blue.